Well, welcome everyone. Uh, let's get started. My name is Gabriel Sanko, based in Colombia, and I'm the founder of uh, Mobile Your Life and Investment Banking for Technology and Urano Capital, deep tech fund, uh, focusing on green energies, impact, uh, intersection of several technologies at once. And I'm happy today to, to again host an event of unicorn startups uh, and, and join with great startups from South America, especially in the green ecosystem, which is basically my, my focus. And also we have some judges here. Uh, and, and I welcome before the startups, if there are some judges that would like to introduce uh, quickly before we start, that would be great. And uh, I also remind you, as I always mention you, that we have three minutes per startup to pitch and then three minutes, around three minutes to five minutes of questions. And then at the end, uh, we will decide the winner. And I remember the judges also, the link to vote, you have the link to vote uh, for every startup. And uh, well, great to be here. I don't know, I see familiar faces like Peter and, and others. If you'd like to introduce quickly before we go, that would be great. Since I was put on spot, I'll start it uh, to kick it out. Um, hello, everyone. Yeah. Uh, buenos dias, I guess. Uh, <laughs> and it's night over here, so my background is a little bit dark, but um, I'm in Singapore. I'm a venture partner at Tria Ventures. It's a VC that's focusing on deep tech and med tech, um, but also deep tech in, with respect to green energy, cybersecurity, fintech, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, size of a check depends on the opportunity. Um, I'm really glad to see everybody here, familiar faces, as uh, Gabriel mentioned, and uh, good luck to everyone. Looking forward to pitches, huh? and I know you're doing well. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Peter. That's great. Uh, if there are no more, ah, I see other judges here, like Gary uh, and Gallo. Please introduce Yeah, please. sure. I'm happy to say something. Great to be here and see some familiar faces. Uh, great to see you, Gabriel. Uh, my name is Gary Fowler. I'm a serial entrepreneur and investor. Uh, I've been involved in uh, 17 startups and two unicorns. I was on the original management team of Click Software, sold to Salesforce for $1.35 billion, and also EVA that I just sold 14 weeks ago. Uh, we believe that intellectual capacity is evenly spread around the world, but opportunities are not. Today, GSD, I'm a CEO, president, co-founder of GSD Get You Done Venture Studios. We're a premier AI and quantum venture studio. We have uh, companies in 51 countries around the world. We're looking for those incredible ideas in areas like artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, quantum computing, metaverse web three, to be able to help them go global. And it's great to be here. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Great. It's re really hard to introduce yourself after uh, Gary's uh, uh, impact. Oh, come on. <laughs> you know something? Come, it's great to see you here today. You know that? Yes. <laughs> it's likewise, my friend. <laughs> I feel like it's family hour. You know, I see so many of you. Yeah, it's really, it's great. <laughs> well, the, 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 the bad thing is we cannot exchange beers, but would like to drink uh, a couple. Uh, so, so I, I will try to uh, to introduce myself as short as possible. My name is Guy Ivanka. I'm originally from Belgrade, Serbia, but mostly working in the region of Southeast Europe, in the ex yugoslav republics, Greece, Bulgaria, Romania, you name it. Uh, I'm a senior finance professional, mostly working on analytics and business transformation uh, tasks through the years. Uh, I work generally uh, with startups, SME, SMB organization, but first 10 of years I spent in the corporate world. Uh, mostly I work uh, in developing uh, and managing technology within manufacturing companies. My expertise comes in financial and operational performance analysis, optimization and management of international tax credits, as well as helping uh, various investors in establishing and opening foreign subsidiaries and branches in the region of Southeast, Eastern and Central Europe. I'm a CEO of Serbian Management Association, which is a think tank from the region. We generally work in Serbia, Montenegro and Bosnia and Herzegovina in Serbian part. 
but we also uh, jointly organize various in, uh, events in terms of uh, finance and banking, compliance, and generally attracting foreign direct investments in the region. So I'm looking forward to learn about uh, today's startups. And uh, I'm here as a representative of uh, a small group of uh, investors from the, the Southeast Europe and also one domestic uh, multifamily office. And they generally invest in deep tech, uh, health tech, uh, fintech, and of course, industry agnostics for, this, uh, for the interesting projects. So I'm really excited to, to be here. That's great, Gallo. Welcome, great to see you. And uh, if we don't have any more judges, then I guess we can get started. Um, our, our first startup today is Corporación Capsula. Uh, so welcome. Please, if you can. Thank you. Yeah. Hello, Gabriel. I'm Francisco from Corporación Capsula. Welcome. Yeah. Feel free to share your, your, your deck. Okay, uh, are you saying okay, the uh, screen? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, I'm star presenting, have to all. My name is Francisco Gomez Salaberry. I'm a CTO and co-founder of Corporación Capsula. That is a fintech that develops a sustainable financial infrastructure of the future. Bitcoin bring, uh, came to bring a solution for inflation. Currencies like Argentinian pesos and other currencies have historic inflation, chronic inflation in their economies. Other currencies, strong currencies like euro, dollar, and pound suffered 10% of inflation these years. But Bitcoin, like a solution, have a big problem. They use the same energy as a country like Pakistan or Kazakhstan. And did you know that Bitcoin mining produced 23 million of metric tons of carbon emission per year. Well, that's why born Capsula. Capsula had solved the chronic inflation we have destroyed our planet. We start developing Capsula Energy. It's the part, it's the part of the, um, the company that develops and administrates sustainable energy, like solar energy. And we provide it to the power company or use it, or can be used to in Capsula Mining. That is a part of the company that mine Bitcoin. We use um, inversion cooling to increase the power um, computer, the computer power of these machines to mine, mine Bitcoin. And then this Bitcoin can be used to sell it in, in our application brick, or can be a reserve of value of this, uh, this uh, application called brick. Brick is a neobank. Is a, a new concept of uh, infrastructure, um, infrastructure economies that have um, reserve in Bitcoin, and also you can operate with that bucket uh, that all operate a bucket in, in Bitcoin. You can collect, pay investment in traditional finance or investment in in Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency, and also you can get loans and micro loans. We are a team of 20 people in different areas. We are experts in our areas and we get a lot of gold in these years. We get a PSP, crypto exchange, telecommunications and investment uh, license to develop our business here in Argentina. Also right now we have two petahashes of computer powers and 200 kilowatts of solar energy in our plant in Resistencia in the Turkish Chaco province in the north of Argentina. And we want to accomplish uh, 100 of petahashes of computer power and 15 megawatts of uh, power energy. Also have 1 million users in BRIC and star operations in Brazil and Paraguay for 2024. Thank you very much for, for your time. And I, I, I'm ready for the questions. Thank you, Francisco. Very interesting. 
yeah, looking forward for those questions from judges. Yes. Hi, uh, really great presentation. I saw Peter raise his hand. Peter, if you wanted to be uh, before me, feel free to do it. No, go ahead, you're first. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, my question would concern, because I have seen your uh, roadmap uh, about your go-to-market strategy. As I have seen that you have planned to complete this year, like around 100K brick users, and increasing in 2023 to 500, like five times. What is your strategy? How are you planning to do it? Well, we first, uh, we go to the, um, yeah, with the business here in the markets, like uh, supermarkets um, and pharmacies, this type of market to use our uh, processor, payment processor with application, and then start offer, um, Discount for our users that use that pay with our application in this in these stores. Uh, this is the first um, business. Um, well, the marketing campaign goes to this this way. Start with uh, stores and business, and then go to the users. And how is the fidelity of the user is from the stores. Start in the stores. I don't know. I don't know if I explain very well, but. When exactly, yeah. are you, when exactly are you going to break even? Sorry? I mean, when exactly you're going to break even? What is the point uh, when you're getting earning money? Okay. You know? We're going to offer in middle of uh, in the next year, we offer prepared care car where you can buy with crypto. You can use to prepare care to, you have Bitcoin on replication, you use the card and you can pay uh, with cryptocurrencies, with the uh, with the prepared card. This is, I think, this is the big point of of uh, this in in brick. What I meant by break even is mean when you are going to cover your initial investment. I mean everything what you invested so far, not you personally. Uh, but I, by the way, you're a self-funded project so far. Have you raised any money yet? Yes, we uh, we raised uh, fundraising for for friends and family in the first round. Uh, and we put uh, an inversion, a total inversion of $1 million uh, with friends and family and um, own inversion. Thank you very much. Looking forward to interact. All the best. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm just gonna follow up on Gaio. Um, so what, do you have any revenues right now? What's your monthly recurring revenue? And yes, how much right is your burn rate? Uh, right now we have a uh, thir uh, thir uh, thirty um, thousand of users in our application that are, are, are using in, in resistencia. Uh, we don't we don't get uh, do a big uh, marketing strategy. We are going to start right now in September, um, and right now the re revenues. I think I don't I don't have exactly the net, the number, but. Um, I don't, I don't have, sorry, I don't have exactly the number here. Okay, uh, what is your burn rate or how much runway you have? How much, how much money you have left before you need to raise? Uh, I, I think, well, uh, how many, sorry, I don't understand the question. I'm not asking how about money. money, I'm asking how much time, how, how long runway you have right now? Uh, right now we have six months of brick development. We are we start uh, two years ago uh, to develop all the idea and well the, this this year we finished the development of the software and this year we we start with the uh, farming in in resistencia. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Let's move forward and we have now a matchup global. Feel free to introduce and uh, share your screen. <clears throat> Okay, thank you. Just give me a second. Sure. Let me know when you can see my screen. Can you see it? Uh huh. Yeah, perfect. All right. <clears throat> thank you. So, hello, everyone. My name is Federico Prada, and I'm one of Machap co founders. Every year in Latin America, we have 3.6 million students that would love to study abroad, but they can't do it. And why they can't do it is due to two main reasons. 
The first one is because they need to find where to go. And the second one is because they need to know how to afford it. For the where, we created Matchup Marketplace, a platform where the students from Latin America can plan their futures overseas by, by reviewing and comparing the offering of hundreds of universities from all over the world and match themselves with the one that suits them best. Since we launched MatchUp MVP for validating the model, we signed 700 universities, we attract 55,000 students, and we have enrolled 300 students in their dream university. Now that the Latin Americans can successfully find where to go, we are ready to tackle the how to afford it by adding a fintech solution to our ecosystem and take our student conversion rates into the skies. From now on, there will be no more, I can't afford the tuitions and fees, I can't afford the flight ticket, I can't afford the accommodation, or even better for all those ones that says, this dream is not for me because I don't have money, we finance you. And how do we plan to do this? With the data we gather in the marketplace, use it for university matching, we are going to pre-qualify the students adding affordability criteria and future potential income and pass it to our financial partners. With this financial solution, we are going to sign 2,000 universities and boost our students' conversion rate over 10 times. How do we make money? It's simple. As a platform, we take a fee every time a student is matched with a dream university and every time a loan is originated. Our average ticket value is $1,500 per student. Me and my co-founder have successfully been in the international academic mobility industry for more than 10 years. And we have along with us a skilled and senior team that is ready to leave the skin in the field for making it happen. We are one of the most experienced teams in this sector. And this is why in Latin America, we are the first movers offering us at a global scale solutions such as this one. Our goal is to enroll 20,000 students per year, equivalent to a revenue of $30 million and become uh, the NOMA of Latin America. In summary, it's a fact that the international student mobility is a global trend. It's a fact that the edtech and the fintech industries are the fastest growing sector in the startup ecosystem in Latin America. And it's a fact that this is a $25 billion opportunity. We are confident that our team can successfully execute on this opportunity. And we are sure that if you have smart money, MatchUp is the right place for you to invest. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Federico. Right on time. And yeah, happy to hear some questions if there are any. Yeah. I would leave it up to Gaurav. Yeah. yeah. OK, sure. First Gaurav, then Guy. Yeah. Sounds good. Go ahead. Go ahead, Gaurav. You're on the mute. Yeah. We cannot hear you, Gaurav. No. <laughs> Things yeah. that happen. Maybe Gaio can. Know? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Gaurav, yeah. Okay, Federico, sorry about that. I have two questions. You mentioned that the $1,500 fee that you generate, $1,400 comes from university, right? Why would universities pay you the fees for this project when it is actually the students that are benefiting from the admissions? It's a good point, uh, but basically it's, a, it's quite normal for universities to, to work with recruiting enrollment or recruiting companies in order to get the students and mainly when it comes to international students. So it's a really common uh, behavior in universities to sign agreements to pay commission for st enrolled students. But Actually, the universities have can have a direct tie up with the US European universities, right? Then why would they need you? Sorry, I, I didn't got it. I was saying the universities in in your country they can have direct tie-ups or collaborations with the U.S. or European universities, right? Why would they yeah. need you then? Because the type of agreements that are, exist between universities is more like temporal in, uh, exchanges, not for a full degree or a full um, MBA or that. So we are promoting 
any any student that wish to study abroad, but they, they don't go like a short-term interchange, then we can do it. We don't do the ones you have mentioned, actually. And one last question. What is the FinTech component here? You mentioned we in are, your presentation. Yes. So it's the, um, the lender hub. We In this first stage, we have created a lender hub that is compound by uh, financial and fintech companies that are lending the money to the prospects. So we put them both, we have both ends in the same place and we are helping them to match each other in order to help the students. You need to bear in mind that for destinations such as Europe, where there is a huge need of young people to go to study there, the loans in average are no, no bigger than 8,000 euros uh, for the total the total uh, length of the of the time they will stay there. So there are small loans. They are not talking about big loans. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Federico. Nice presentation. Uh, can you tell us a bit about your competitive landscape? And additionally, would like to have a more uh, deeper insight in your your in your financial forecast as i have seen that you have acquired more than 100 us 100k uh, in 2021 and you're expecting by the end of this year around 300k um, us dollars uh, can you tell us yeah. a bit uh, what is your current revenue in this year versus uh, the expected one Okay, so let me go uh, by part. So the revenue in last year has been 100,000. Last year we have been, there was the first year we have been able to help international students to go abroad. It was just the second part of the year because the before there was a travel one. And this year we are going to hit our goal of 300K. So it's a 3X growth from one other year to the other. And our expectation for next year is around 600K. Of course, it's, that 600K is uh, tied to the ease investment round we are looking here. And sorry, I think you asked something else I'm, I'm, I'm right now forgetting. Uh, ask about your competitive landscape, about uh, your, for your direct sorry. competitors and what, what uh, differentiates you amongst them. Well, right now in Latin America, there are not companies doing what we are doing. So basically our competitors are international companies that are mainly based in, in Middle East, in Asia, and uh, in Europe, uh, obviously in US as well. I would say all of these companies right now are focusing the um, big four destinations, US, UK, Canada, and Australia. We, are, we do work with those destinations, but those destinations are a better fit just for the 10% of the Latin Americans. The remaining 90% is much more, much with the, um, better fit with Spain, Portugal, or even Italy where we can get university for free or a really cheap price and there are no barriers to work or there are no language barriers in certain cases. So actually our demand is going in the direction into Europe and the rest of the companies are focusing in the big four. So that's, I would say the main differentiation. The second one is we have been in this industry for more than 10 years. We have another startup that is a recruiting agency for student athletes. So we know really well the requirements of each country and the documentations and the destinations as well. And there are things that are really difficult to gather in, in a so fragmented region like such as Latin America. And the last thing that they will, the, our big competitors out there, they are very big, is to understand the culture of each country and the needs of the different families when it comes to do an international a move like the one we are proposing here. That, that we would say is the main differentiations. Thank you very much for your third answer. Um, good All luck right. with your endeavor. Thank you, thank you guys, thank you. All right, let's move forward with Jade, Jade Altison. Welcome. Feel free to share your screen. Hello everyone, I'm sharing right now. Sure, hi. Hello, uh, are you seeing my screen? Yeah, perfect, you can go ahead. Perfect. Okay. Let me just check. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you. I'm Ronaldo. This little guy here is my son, Lucas. He's nine years old and he has been diagnosed with autism. When we discovered his condition and started the special education, as a data scientist, I was seeing so much subjectivity and questioned myself how can the teacher know the real needs of my child? How can I be sure that my child is learning? Can I provide some tool that can help in his development? 
So assembled a team with experts in relevant fields, Dr. Marcelo, PhD neurologist, Joyce, neuropsychologist, and a team of UX game designers, pedagogues to create Jade. Jade is a game-based platform that fast-tracks the education of children with special needs. We have 1,500 games that stimulate cognitively, but we also track behavioral data to provide individualized insights to the, to the professionals, from the professionals to the child. Now we have 110,000 users in 179 countries. We are currently attending four school districts and 300 schools. In the first half of 2022, we reached $250,000 in revenue. We attend both markets. We are B2B and B2C. Families pay a monthly subscription to use the app and the school pay a yearly fee per student per year to receive the reports and use the platform for the professionals. For said reasons, this market opportunity is huge. There are 380 million children in the world with some kind of cognitive disability. And every year, it spends $16 billion in assistive technology. We were the champions of JITEX feature stars in Dubai in 2020, what, which led us to opportunities in uh, UAE. So we are also in Hub 71 in Abu Dhabi. We are just uh, got invested by, by the Phone 500 uh, MENA, and we started a partnership with LEGO to develop new features, making the app even better. We have this mission to impact 5 billion children in the next five years. If you want to know more, uh, I'll be happy to answer your question. Thank you. Very interesting. Thank you. Uh, congrats. Uh, yeah, judges, go ahead. Feel free to join. <clears throat> Any question? Uh, yes, I do have a question. Sure, sure. Hello, hello, ma'am. Go, go you Hi, first. Hello. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering which kind of clinical validation do you have for your system? And uh, if you did have to go through any regula regulatory processes anywhere in the world? Perfect. Uh, uh, we use a methodology already validated uh, called a discrete trial teaching that has been used for more than 40 years. And we, even this way, we made three rounds of uh, research after launching the platform in 2017, 2019, and we just ended the last one here in uh, USP, University of Sao Paulo, is the biggest one of Brazil. Uh, and we have a very strong team also in our background. And about regulations in, uh, uh, about when you talk about uh, education and uh, decision support, we just need uh, evidences uh, of the platform. And we already have this with all our documents. So we are ready to operate basically in everywhere. Thank you. Thank you. Great, thank and you. are you a hardware and software or are you only software? Uh, we are only software. We prefer to don't go yet to a hardware, uh, thinking in scalability. So we are now uh, ready to scale to everywhere and uh, independent of the number of users. And with hardware, we think would be a little more difficult to make this. Got it. And uh, uh, at the moment, have you deployed this? Uh, have you generated any revenue? Yes, in the only in the first half of 2022, we had two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in revenue. Only this right. in this uh, first semester. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I will reach out. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. You you still have a question. We still have time for one more. So I had a question, but I mean, I had let the ladies, uh, so everybody has a fair opportunity to ask questions. I, I was just curious, uh, where is your main revenue coming from? Is it still Brazil, Portugal, or, or uh, you know, is it is there a language dependency or are the games, uh, you know, not really a language dependent? Mm -hmm. Yes, our platform is already in English, Spanish, Portuguese, and Arabic. Our revenue is 85% uh, from Brazil because we started in Brazil and uh, most of these schools uh, are from Brazil, but we are already operating in the UK, in London. So our company is already in London and also in Abu Dhabi. So we have uh, a small part until now from other countries also. Is your revenue mostly from a B2B or B2C? 
B2B, but we are right now, okay. uh, from the last investment, growing the B2C to uh, grow this revenue from the families, uh, because today is very small part comparing to the B2B. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you, congrats. And let's uh, move forward. We have now a desk, my the startup. Uh, feel free to, to join. Yeah, I'm sharing right now, just a sec. Sure. Just loading. Sure. Everything is okay? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, okay, perfect. So hi guys, nice to meet you all. My name is Vinicius, I'm the co-founder of DeskMy. We are revolutionizing the way people connect with their peers in this new remote work world. We know that people love the flexibility of remote work, being close to family, not wasting time by commuting, but remote work comes with a price. As software is eating the world, it is also eating the productivity of companies. Teams are drowning in an overload of retail interactions from Zoom to Slack to Teams and every one of the dozen apps in between. In fact, 65% of these actives report that meetings keep them from doing real productive work. That's why we are building DeskMy, your work desk from anywhere. You open your DeskMy working from home, a cafe, co-working, or even the office, and voila, you are visually side by side with your teammates while being totally in totally different locations. And it's very simple to use. Open your mic, start talking, tell us transport to a different room, open all your apps in the same place. At your desk, you have everything you need to do your best work. Our competitive advantage is that desk is being built to focus on productivity. It's not a game, it's not the virtualization of the office. We are empowering employees to be more focused on what is needed to be accomplished then which app is being used since communication and collaboration is happening in the same place. We are a SaaS with a freemium model, and we know that we are into something since people for, from 13 different countries are using, are spending almost seven hours daily at their desk mice. Our founding team has solid experience in high growth companies and tech. We know the competitive landscape, and we know how to build scalable systems and grow profitable businesses. We are proud of what we build in collaboration with over 1,000 people that become hundreds of paying customers, but we want more. We want to disrupt the $30 billion collaboration and communication market. And we are working hard to provide infrastructure for people to be able to do their best work and for companies to hire the best talents, all that without geographic constraints. Thank you. In fact, I'm right now inside Ask Mike. Huh, thank you, Vinicius. Very interesting. Yeah, I'm right here. Yeah. 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 It reminds me of a company I invested before pandemic, similar, but congrats. Yeah. Any judges? Go ahead. Yeah. Or questions? Peter, sure. Yeah, can you talk more about your competition? You 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 said you know your competition, but who are they? Who are you competing with? Because I'm personally using some very similar thing called Ovice, which is Japanese. Perfect. So I, I know there's a lot of them out there actually. Yeah, yeah, perfect. So basically we, we, we uh, separate in three different generations that we talk about this kind of metaverse for work in this kind of immersion, immersion platforms. We have like Teams, Meet and Zoom, but today we are integrating with these platforms. We also have this virtualization of the office like Gather, Team Flow, Cozy, Come Space. But the, the main fact that we are built for the B2B market. So we do integration to all the platforms, all the apps that you bring inside here and start working from the same place. So collaboration and communication is happening at the same time. So basically here at the right side, you have all your apps that you, you need for your daily basis. So you can integrate your Salesforce CRM. You can integrate like a, a mental wellness uh, uh, platform that you provide to your employees. You can bring Figma, Miro, everything inside the same platform. So it's a hub for everything that the company is, is using already. Do you customize it? And I'm not talking about integration. Um, I'm, I'm talking about um, if you go B2B, they may want to have designed their own workspace kind of thing. Perfect, like the design. Perfect. 
yes, yes. Uh, not only the, the floor plan, but you can also have different floors, you can have different spaces, you have different immersions in the spaces. So for example, you have a garden and there you have some bird sounds in the, on the back, in, it could do a lot of things inside. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I have a question. So just where are you right now in terms of revenue? Like, uh, and maybe I missed that. Right now we are at 25K uh, ARR, basically. ARR, uh -huh. now the, is it, it's non-subscription model? It's a subscription model or no? It's a subscription model, a SaaS model, yeah. And so what's your growth MRR month over month? 30% right now. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, I like the idea you're addressing this idea of infobesity, right? This is part of the problem. I mean, we all have them with too many data points. So I like that. So what have, who are your targeted partners that you're looking at right now? Basically, we are now expanding. So as we have 30, 30 different countries users right now, we are expanding our, our operations because we, we achieve the retention. Basically, we our customers love the platform. So we are starting to grow this. And basically, we are looking, we, in the next few months, we are going to do a seed round. And also, we are we are uh, want to leverage partners in different locations. So we have a distributed team already, people in the US, people in Brazil. Now we have... Uh, uh, Starting a new, a new, a new go-to-market strategy through event into Singapore and Asia, but we we need, we really wanted to leverage people partners to help us get to the enterprises and also our seed round. Mm -hmm. Got it. I know a little bit about the space. I just sold a company to uh, so my company I co-founded, Eva, just got sold to Vizier. So if you know Vizier in Canada, right? Yeah. So we know a little bit about the space. So happy to talk about it further. Okay. Great. Thank you, Gary. Vinicius, very Thank interesting. Uh, let's continue. And now would be the, the turn of my aquarium. Melita. Hello there. Let Welcome. me show you. Thank you. Um, and sorry, I have to set up share screen. Uh, yeah. Are you seeing my screen yet? No, no yet. Oh, oh sorry. Sorry, sorry. Give me just one second. So we're having some issues. Can we forward to the next version and then I can make the presentation? Okay, okay, no worries. Thank you uh, very much. Move forward with Fabic then. Fabic, if you're here. Let me check. Not here. Then let's move forward with uh, Y Home Software. Let's move forward with you while we get Melissa and, and the other startup. All right, can, do you see my screen? Yes, perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Gabriel. Happy to be here. Hello, everybody. My name is Juan Rodriguez. I'm a CEO, co founder of We Home, the new way for online businesses to put on automatic their reconciliation. So basically, a reconciliation, it's a complex and expensive and a tricky process. All of the online high growth, uh, high growth process, they use, used to be used these digital payments gateway, aggregators like Shopify, Amazon. They have to handle all banks that they have operation in each country. And as a result, they have to reconcile transaction sheets in manual like account receivable reparation software. So basically, they spending on uh, wasting time and money doing this manually. This is a ninety-two billion dollars global manual reconciliation opportunity. Just in US and Latin, Latin America, it's this big, a very big uh, opportunity. Just with Colombia, Mexico, um, Chile, and 
all of the Caribe um, here in this moment in Puerto Rico open operations, it's an opportunity in $6.5 billion. This is the cost of reconciled manually in Latin America. This is a, a very big, happy economy market uh, for disruption. The 90% of the small and medium enterprises in Latin America reconciled manually. And just the World Bank in the just in the industry e-commerce transactions says that it exists for 20, 20, uh, 24 more than $160 billion in online transactions. We are very big uh, uh, growth. Basically, we automate the financial operations for high growth companies. We integrate bank reports, we integrate payments gateway and aggregators for doing the consolation automatically in accounting software or ERP software. How, how it works, the setup is in five minutes. This is a SaaS with no code. We just need the API and your credentials for each uh, app that you want to integrate for your workflow in accounting. You can integrate with your bank. And basically, for doing the auto sync in accounting workflow for customers saving money and time. This is very quick example for WhatsApp. We send all in, in Latin America uh, links for doing the reconciliation. The people pay with all of the methods available, cash even. And we consider this payment in WhatsApp. Basically, this is the team, very big team in corporate venture, fintech, and other banks and angel investors that are a part of our opportunity. This is the roadmap for apps. We want to integrate even the IRS providers because it's so important in Latin America. Uh, they want to know everything about the revenue of the, each, each company. Banks that don't, doesn't have uh, APIs open. And basically we are doing this in this moment. This is our uh, traction and all of the transaction processes in our platform. This is the money that we are in this moment our reconciliation in, in, in Wehome and with a very big uh, in, in traction in numbers and revenue, obviously. This is our go to market strategy. We have more than 20 resellers and business partners as a SAP, Seagull, Treaty, that's our, uh, uh, you know, some partners, very big partners in the AP and accounting software. For example, Seagull is the most important, is the QuickBooks of Latin America. And we have alliances with banks, you know, to do the e upgrades for all of the e-commerce and SaaS uh, enterprises that want to uh, get their reconciliation in other level. So thank you so much. Great, thank you very much. Uh, any questions? Yeah, uh, this is Ratnakar from India. Uh, in India, I have seen many companies doing this integration. Uh, on the volume, what is that percentage you make in terms of your monthly revenue? Because volume has steeped up. How much percentage you make? Okay, we are a SaaS. So we uh, basically uh, have an MRR. We don't have a transaction fee or something. Uh, just see a subscription and its subscription depends on your revenue as a company. Okay, okay. Because in India, I've seen many companies use per transaction, they charge certain small percentage and the volume goes up, they're making money. They're not doing a subscription. They made it uh, pay per use. I think you can- Exactly, we have a, a, a commission with the payment gateway, for example, for our customers. And that's the- but it's so little in this moment. So the big uh, revenue is the SaaS. Yes, sir. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Michael, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Gabriel. Um, my question is, who is your customer, inter internal customer? Who are you going after um, to buy this for, for the company? Exactly. In this moment, the, uh, the most important customers for us are the e-commerce that are growing so fast in in other countries. That is the uh, customer that we are targeting in this moment and the SaaS companies. Okay, the I first mean, one, within, e within the company, what is, you know, what is the title or what is the function of the person who is your customer? Finance operations teams. I'm sorry, I can't hear you? Uh, finance operations teams, the CFOs of the companies. And do you, do you focus on um, a certain size of company, large, small, large, medium? In this small, moment, in this focus? moment, ex ex Sorry, excellent question. You. Do you hear me right now? 
this moment the, the yeah. mostly is medium companies because we are developing the uh, other integrations as SAP and Oracle to get more customers in enterprises and high level uh, big companies. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, thank you, Michael. And then we can go back to Melissa if you can share your screen right now. And yes. We can yeah, right. yeah, thank you so much. And I'm sorry, especially Sean, that you have to start in a rush, <laughs> but no. now I'm ready. Okay, go ahead. Um, now you see my screen? Yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, um, well I'm, I'm starting to introduce myself. I'm Melissa, and I'm a graphic designer that it has, um, sorry that it has um, seven years of experience in the field. And I'm, a, I'm super passionate about crypto world and especially uh, NFTs and how this can help you and bring a solution into the real world. So I'm here today to talk to you about how NFTs can make a better real world. Um, well, uh, I'm starting to, maybe some of you are wondering what are NFTs. Um, NFTs or non-fungible token are digital assets certified using blockchain uh, technology and that allow us uh, to prove authenticity and ownership of, on that asset. And in my aquarium, what I'm uh, proposing is an immersive virtual aquarium set up in the metaverse, powered by this technology, the NFTs. Uh, it's a custom space uh, through which holders can raise, care for, and enjoy fantastic creatures and NFT animals without, and this is the important part, without damaging the aquatic ecosystem and generating an impulsive impact on it. Uh, NFT technologies has a dramatic increase in the last four years, uh, and it is in the early stages, but it will be a game changer not only in the IT field, but in our, our day lives. Uh, let's talk about uh, numbers. NFT market had an incredibly growth in the last few years with 2.5 million users and total sale of $40 billion and rising. Um, so the problem that we want to solve is that the fears related to the traffic of unornamental ships and the damage that they cause in the marine ecosystem are alarming. For though you know, uh, for every fish that you saw in a fish bowl, there's already a dead fish. So more than uh, 5, 50% uh, is already dead. Uh, Christian vectors and artists are looking for real utilities instead of simple speculation or art without increasing value. And people love virtual worlds while the real ones has a dramatic environmental problems. So the solution to these problems are, um, uh, we want to discourage the erosion of animal to just an ornamental object by replacing fishbowl with a fantastic and customizable aquarium in the metaverse. Um, sorry. Uh, each animal in my aquarium will be an NFT whose value will be reflected in the rarity and utility of the token, allowing the holder to have access to multiple benefits in virtual and real world. And for the third solution, will we create the first customizable aquarium in the metaverse that is compatible with virtual reality? And this generates uh, an immersive experience for the user and that at the same time, we allow a positive impact on the marine ecosystem. So let me show you how it works. Um, we have this person that buys the NFT. With only that action, it makes three things. Discourage the ornamental fishing trade, uh, found my aquarium, and profit, uh, we can make a donation to an animal defense NGO. And of course, this person with this NFT, now we can use it in the metaverse and enjoy it, or uh, he or she can sell it and have a profit about with that. And we have a 10% revenue. That brings us to the business model. Um, there are several ways to obtain benefits on this business model. The first of all, 
of course, is direct sale of the NFT. Uh, a buyer becomes a holder, and the holder can sell that NFT, and we have this ten rev revenue revenue. And we can also have collabs with brand projects and artists. I like to think on my aquarium like a canvas where an artist, uh, another project, or a, even a big brand can have visibility. And that brings me to the next point that is advertising, because we are creating a space in the metaverse and advertising can be a part of it. Of course, always prioritizing the user experience. And in this space, we can have also virtual events and community can buy, com community can buy merchandising. Well, about revenue, um, we're only solving out the first five, uh, six drops. We can um, cover our expenses and having uh, on the first generations sold out one, uh, 130 cents Ethereum, that is like $200. And well, let me introduce the other person of the team is another graphic designer and uh, we will we built already this metaverse. So thank you all for your time and let's see their questions. Thank you, Melissa, thank you. Any questions? Uh, Gallo, yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Gabriel. Melissa, nice presentation. And you. Can, you, can you tell me a bit about your uh, competitive landscape? Who are your competitors and what makes you spe special in the oh, sea of yeah. blockchain and fintech startups? Yeah, that's a really interesting question because we can say that every NFT project is a indirect competition, but um, our project is not only about NFTs, it's about building a community and having real problem solutions. So I think that I mean, uh, competitors have to have that point too. Like, we are solving something that uh, impacts on the on our real world and in the ecosystems. I don't know if that uh, answers your question. Yeah, it, it answers. Can you additionally tell me, I believe we have enough space for Michael to, to ask his question, but would like to know a bit more about your uh, current uh, software development? Are you improving your platform? What, what is going on with it? The platform is not yet uh, developed. We are talking with a few um, people that can uh, help us uh, build it. Because the first step is build a community that will support and found my aquarium. And then we can start building this, this uh, in the so, so, so uh, metaphorically speaking, how far are you from your MVP? Um, we already have the first part that we developed the first drop, so we can start selling and then found the 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 metaverse. So I think that you know um, an NFT project can be sold in like few hours or months. Um, in average, it takes two to three months, uh, depends on the marketing campaign. But I think that it, in six months, we can have it uh, build it up. Thanks for being transparent. Good luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. So just, just a quick one, this brother here. When Gaio said metaphorically, I was not sure whether he was referring to the MVP or the distance. Sorry, I didn't hear well. Can you repeat? Uh, Subrata added. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just 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 making some light. Uh, just I just I just I don't want it to sound a, a bit harsh with my question because whenever you ask about your current state of software uh, development, you know, you I didn't want it to uh, be, be such a. Uh, a tough uh, questioner. Got it. Got it. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Good. Great. Michael, go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Um, hi. Hi, Melissa. Um, I, I really like the idea of the aquarium. I think it's a really smart idea, self-contained idea. Um, and I like the um, animal defense fund idea as well. And my question is, you mentioned that these are NFTs with real utility. So what is the utility of these NFTs? 
all the utility the utility have to do in two parts like you have utility in the metaverse because each uh, nft has a level of rarity that place the holder in in different stages and things that he or she can do and also have an utility in real world because the purchase has to um, i mean the principal pur purpose of the project is to help ngos uh, that helps marine life to to i mean to have an impact uh, a positive impact in this world and do these aquariums or do these nfts within the aquarium concept do they tell a story yes of course I mean, in this metaverse, we can build an uh, custom aquarium. So as you can see, sorry, uh, let me show you the possibilities. Like could be, an aquarium could look like this. It's not only the, the aquarium that we know. So each aquarium will have a different story. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, great. Let's uh, let's continue with B Technology, our next company today. Feel free to introduce. If we have B Technology here today, just check quickly. Uh, while we see if they join, our next startup will be Aracar Group. If you are here as well. Aracar Group. Hi, how are you? Yes. We can hear you. Hi. Hi there, this is Russell Abrams. Can you see the screen? Yeah, perfect. Okay, so we're we're emerging markets focused um, company focused on bringing secured credit to the masses. Um, focus is, let me just see, how do I? Okay, our, 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 focus, our focus is... Sorry to interrupt you, Russell, if you can expand your, your deck so we can see in the, in the, whole, the whole screen, like in the presentation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, which is the... Would be maybe in... You view. go in, into the view section and then scroll right. it down, you, you're, going to definitely, you're, you're going to find yeah. it, yeah. In view, thank you, guys, yeah. <clears throat> I'm sorry, in view? I the left side, up, upper side, yeah, the left. You're close. Yeah, yeah file, edit, view. A little bit, yeah, edit, view. Ah, uh, view. Right, uh-huh. Yeah, you have a full screen mode. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay, sorry about sure. that. Go okay, ahead, Lord. Sure. sure, so our business is basically taking out of the middle part of financing people with a focus on secured financing. And, and what we do really is in emerging markets where cost structures of banks are very high. So banks do what's called cost plus financing, bringing a much um, better solution to the end consumer. Um, we are a very experienced team. Um, people who joined us generally came from banks managing large auto um, financing units, technology team, very focused on dealership services, which means bringing services to help dealerships buy and sell more cars, bringing in advanced technology, inventory management, pricing of vehicles, um, the, the type of strategies you see in airline seats, how they're sold, or hotel rooms where the pricing is much faster, inventory is managed much better by a Walmart. Um, Used cars is the majority of the business. Fragmented market. Dealerships want to get paid in cash. They don't trust the banks. So what we do is we bring a nice, simple service for the dealerships to know their customer when they walk in, a way for them to sell a car with installment payments, and a way for lenders to have access to those loans in a very standardized way, um, and then using a securitization market. So the focus is not simply being a lender to the dealerships, but helping their underlying business of buying and selling cars. The key focus is we're asset light. We have a FinTech, we originate loans. How do we make money? We sell the car loans. So when you're doing secured lending, you can approve a lot more people than the banks because there's an underlying asset. So we don't have to make super high rates. 
And we have a massive market in Brazil. 25% of used cars have financing, 75% are cash. Uruguay is the same. Um, our focus is Brazil. We've gotten great market share, 10% market share in the dealerships we operate. Number one car loan originator in Argentina for Santander. Uruguay won a contract with General Motors to transform their dealerships to sell more used cars. Uh, so the unit economics are high. We, we originate car loans, we sell them at a premium. Um, so it's a very scalable business, very fast. The growth is really based on lending capital, um, which is a little separate, but the unit economics create contribution margins of 80%. Um, and the focus really is knowing the dealerships and removing from emerging markets personal guarantees. That, that is the way to think of it. A dealership can work with us without a personal guarantee, uh, which is a big deal for everybody. Uh, huge opportunity and you know, experienced advisors from the industry. So I'll, I'll finish it there. Uh, this is Thank you. Thank you, Russell. Yeah, great. Uh, Peter. Yeah, I'm just curious, so uh, if I understand you correctly, so your app is free and you're only making money on the loans? Um, that's Yes. Yeah, we don't charge them for the software. We want to see all the data. I want to see every customer goes to their dealership. I want to have all their inventory in our system and see every customer looked at every car and helping them that way. The car loan origination fee, a consumer pays $200 to get their car loan done in a minute. And they see it's transparent, it's capitalized into the loan. And then we sell that loan to a premium to the lending facility. And you take percentage of a transaction? Yes, yes. Okay. It's, um, yes, with the securitization model, I mean, Carvan in the United States sells car loans. They make all the money selling a car loan, not selling a car. So on average, you're selling car loans in a few years, about 10 or 11% premium than the face value of the loan. Do you have any revenue forecast? I don't think I've seen any forecast. Uh, what is your current traction revenue? So, yes, the current oh. traction, um, you know, we have to secure more lending capital. The, the unit economics are extremely high in our business. You're making about 8% revenues right now relative to the the loan originations you're doing and you know your costs are more you know fixed costs at the beginning um, so the revenues are directly proportional to the lending capital i will tell you in brazil argentina uruguay we've never had a problem originating loans good quality car loans so we have an 85 percent advance rate and we're, we're talking to people on the debt side the critical point is getting over 10 million we've originated about 14 million dollars of loans over the life of the business. Um, in Brazil, we need to get a $10 million portfolio. We have an 85% advance rate, so we're putting in 2 million and would get there at that point, you pretty much can work with all the asset managers on the debt side. Once again, securing more lending capital. Can, so can I ask you a question too? So what ex where are you exactly today with it in terms of revenue? So re revenue today, um, the, you know, we're, we're going to do currently this last month, you, you, we did around $200,000, uh, in, in revenue, we, the revenues held up from the lending capital and working with the capital markets. Um, so is that the to, amount of loans or is that the amount that you made? No, that's our revenues. Mm -hmm. We, we originate loans for Santander. They pay us a 7% fee. Uh, we're the number one car loan originator in Argentina. You can't take money out of Argentina. It's a huge problem, though. So we have to create revenues in Brazil, um, quite it. frankly, where we have to line up more lending capital so we can earn it up larger. We're, you know, revenues in Brazil are twenty five, thirty thousand dollars a month now. Got it. Can I ask additional question? Why is the headcount so high? Isn't it automated? You, you need people to actually do the loans. Uh, so, I mean, we have a, we got about, we, we have a pretty big tech team. It's a fully digital system. It's the most advanced system you have in Brazil um, in, in that regard. So about 20%, you know, 20% of our workforce are, are developing programming. 50% uh, of our workforce 
are salespeople. We think it's critical when you have a SaaS business, the dealerships need to understand your product. And it's the critical component. You have to make the product simple enough for them to work with, but still have real added value. And so we need salespeople in the street. That's, that's what really drives your sales, having the people physically going to the inventory. inventory the dealerships have high turnover. Um, it's not like you could just teach them once. They have high turnover. It's very fragmented. Um, Latin America emerging markets is still a face type of a business that then people like to see somebody know they can talk to somebody. So 50% of the workforce really are salespeople on the street dealing with customers. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Let's go with you, Gaurav. Uh, last question and, and then we move forward. How do you mitigate the risk when you sell, when you provide loans on used cars? There is always a chance of default, right? Especially with the current market condition. And for that matter, um, you know, it could even happen with the new cars because you are primarily targeting the borrowers that have been many a times rejected by the banks, right? So our average credit score is 100 points higher than the banks. That's the exact opposite. That's what I thought the business was. We're targeting people that value their time, quite frankly. Working with a bank is slow and bureaucratic. So most people are denied credit based on their income. That's not easily recognizable, not their credit score. Um, and, and there we're much better. Um, we've been having NPLs of around 3%, um, which... You know, most people do pay, they're late, um, but they pay. What we control the risk is loan to values on average are 50%, um, which has been the, our focus, which is the difference with unsecured lending. Thank you. Thank you, Russell. Uh, yeah, well, let's move forward with our last last company today, uh, Ecofi. And just remind you to the judges to vote in the links you have before our last uh, startup and yeah welcome ecofi if you are here yes thank you um let me, sh let me make sure i can hmm? yes, i'm not being able to share my screen right now maybe okay. you can give me permission yeah let, let's from russell if you can uh stop sharing your screen yes yeah, so i'm looking yeah. that way on here you should I apologize. No worries. I believe in the middle of the screen, you, you, you should have this oh, top. Stop share, I see. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you for your time, guys. And congratulations, everyone, on your projects. Very nice. And me, I'm just make sure are you seeing my screen right now yeah perfect okay great um so we're ecofi we're a word of mouth marketing and sales channel based on community performance what problem that we find is that brands are wasting money by choosing inefficient advertising channels to generate word of mouth marketing on one side we have the brands that are forced to generate word of mouth indirectly with no control or data no evidence of referrals no lead generation and no connection to point of sale. And on the other side, as we see, we have the people that are the main vehicle of word of mouth, but they are not being attributing, attributed as an advertising channel by receiving rewards and commissions based on their performance. Our solution is that Equify activates the power of word of mouth by creating a new marketing and sales channel based on community performance, delivering benefits and commissions. We have a unique end-to-end marketing technology, connecting a referral software, affiliate marketplace, and a community of advocates. We have complete tracking of referrals and missions integrated to offline and online points of sale. And we have performance-based attribution rewards and commissions completely integrated to the banking system. What do we do at Ecofi? We do referral programs and social commerce campaigns for brands, employee missions, smart digital sampling connected also to point of sale, coupons, discount cards, surveys, and amplify the message within our uh, community of advocates. How does it work? We invite the advocates. The advocates can download the app or recommend without an app. They create their own link where they can see their campaign and the incentives. They can share it through any social media channel. Then they generate the qualified lead of any person that clicks on their link, then, and we take them to the point of sale. If the lead converts on point of sale, 
he immediately, the advocate immediately, immediately receives his commission or reward. This is why Equify is fundamentally different end-to-end -end marketing, uh, word of mouth marketing solution. On the market, we find referral softwares, we find affiliate marketplaces, and we find traditional communities, but they are not connected. Equify is connected as an advertising channel. We have a referral software, we have an affiliate marketplace, and we have a community of called a community that is our own community of advocates. Our, pi our pricing model is a monthly fee plus a commission for every transaction. Our market size is a $40 billion market that sums the referral, the affiliate, and the influencer market worldwide. And based on our go-to-market strategy, we're heading to a $500 million market in US, Colombia, Mexico in the next two to three years. Um, but our KPIs, we have been growing uh, more than uh, for, for uh, one thousand four hundred ninety-two percent, the amount of conversions generated in our in our in our platform in this year, our commercial pipeline is we have twenty-nine clients in the pipeline, two in negotiation, twelve clients already on board, a very healthy LTV CAC ratio of twenty-nine seventeen x, and our active users are three hundred and eight, and we have been growing three hundred and eight percent on this uh, on this year. And MRR of five thousand dollars. I'm projecting MRR of one hundred thirty-three thousand dollars a month, and by July twenty twenty-four. Uh, about our founders, we have more than forty years of combined experience: uh, CEO, CTO, COO, CPO, um, covering all uh, the go-to-market strategy. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Congrats, uh, judges. Any any doubts, questions, feedback? So what is the revenue right now? Right now, uh, we have accumulated revenue of, uh, we're uh, just starting our sales. We have accumulated revenue of $40,000. And right now our monthly revenue is $3,000. But we're just uh, onboarding major clients and partners. And we're projecting MRR uh, by $35,000 by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, I think okay. that's it for today. I don't know, any other doubts? Yeah. Thank you guys. Gabriel, maybe just last one, um, sure. if you have time. Sure, sure, go ahead. Okay, uh, what's your competitive advantage, uh, Daniel, if you could uh, throw some light on it? So, excuse me, sorry? Competitive advantage? Our competitive advantage, various things. We have uh, a, a, un a unique model that, uh, that, that uh, it connects uh, it's our own referral software with our own affiliate marketplace that they're normally disconnected and we have our own community of advocates also we're uh, we're the only ones that disburse money as a commission for every lead and every conversion so this combination is is what makes us a, a, a complete advertising channel and that's what what we want we want the uh, every brand uh, in their marketing budget, have uh, their word of mouth through Equify activated for for every campaign. Sorry, thank you, Michael. Can you have Michael, sure. go ahead. Yeah, hi, hi, Daniel. I really like I like this idea a lot. Um, I have a question that that uh, has to do with the difference between uh, referrals and influencers. So. Yeah. Um, you're a word of mouth business. Nobody, uh, I mean, influencers, some of them have an incredible megaphone. Yeah. Um, could, could you, do you in, anticipate going to influencers uh, uh, in a way that could monetize their influence, yes. another way to monetize their influence um, by using your model? And is yes. that, how is that to your strategy? Is that a central tenant or is that sort of a secondary idea? So Michael, uh, thank you for your for your question. Um, very important. Uh, we measure uh, influencers. We can measure them with our technology. We know the exact uh, conversions that they generate through any uh, post that they that they make. But uh, they don't want to be measured. So that's why uh, they don't like to be measured because they're more in awareness or lifestyle. Uh, but we we generate for brands. Um, and special links that are connected to point of sale. So we know exactly what they're doing. About our go-to-market strategy, we think that um, 
that anyone anyone can be a an advocate for a brand. You can have one million followers or five five friends. So anyone can be a part of a, a of a of a of an advocate community for a brand. So um, ab about our go to market strategy, um, we in our in the part of communities we have alliances with uh, major communities. For example, we just closed a major deal with a with the biggest BPO of Colombia that that contracts. 65,000 people a year. So those type of people are the ones that, that we major, uh, we want to, to have in our platforms uh, generating recommendations and earning uh, additional money. But as you said, uh, it works for influencers also. Thank you so much. I really think you're onto something here. So congrats. Thank you, Mike. All right, thank you. Thank you everyone. That was the last uh, company today. And let's start the voting, finishing the voting for all judges. And while we do that, I don't know, we'll love to open the mic a little bit for judges, uh, feedbacks, uh, impressions while we're voting and closing. Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts before we end today. Yeah, I have some thoughts. I think you're doing a great job, Gabriel. You, you know, it's great seeing these incredible companies and and some of the ideas that each time we do these uh Unicorn battles, they get better and better and better. So keep up the great work. And, you know, the key is, it's like having a Ferrari in the garage. You know, we got to get the Ferrari out of the garage is one thing taking it down the neighborhood, but another thing winning Formula One. So the idea is get those companies out, you know, and get them out to the global market as fast as you can. And, and uh, you know, get, get shit done, as we say. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. Oh, great job. Gary, a quick comment. Most of us don't have a Ferrari. Can you give us a different analogy so we get a feel for it? How about a, a Nissan 350? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know. A Volkswagen. <laughs> well, if, if they go if they go EV, we might have one though. No? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's good. That's good, guys. Yeah, great. Uh, also, I, I like, uh, uh, you know, the intersection right now of energy and decentralization. I think that's something that's going to grow a lot. And I, it's good to see a few startups that were trying to tackle that angle with the NFTs or Bitcoin, trying to solve that, you know, narrative, which is huge right now. So I really like that. Uh, but yeah. Hey, other... Gabriel, just, just FYI, I have a very interesting guest on my show at 12 o'clock today, I, uh, Gazelle E-Bikes. It's owned by the uh, Pond Group, which is one of the wealthy uh, families. Yeah. Anyhow, we're going to talk about, uh, you know, people talk about electric cars, but rarely do they talk about what's happening with bikes. And they're one of the top bike groups in the world, Gazelle. Wow. So if you get a chance, uh, actually dealing with the president. Um, of Gazelle. I'm going to have one of their marketing folks on, but we're going to talk about e-mobility. So people want to tune in, check, take a look. It'll be interesting. Yes. I'd love to, please. Yeah. yeah. Great guys. Any other thoughts uh, or feedbacks, even for, for, from the startups as well, we can open the mic a little bit more and uh, I'll let you know once we have the, the results here. One second. I would just like to add, if I could, Gabriel, um, the importance of community in so many companies. Um, it's it's not a trivial thing. It's a central thing. It's incredibly important, whether in my aquarium or Echo Fee, um, uh, you know, even even things like um, uh, DeskMy. So um, I would just I would just urge um, you know everybody. My suggestion is never forget that much of this uh, is ends up being about community and how to build it and how to nurture it. So thanks very much. Really good stuff too. Thanks, Gabriel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, also, I, yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead, Gary. Yeah. yeah, no, what I want to wanted to say, you know, I've been doing this stuff for 37 years, building startups. I've been involved in 17 and, and seen a lot of things besides I lived in Russia. I started the, now it seems like it would never happen, but I started the ecosystem in Russia, the first wow. accelerator. I lived in Moscow, learned Russian and all that. But what I can tell you is it's really important. One thing that's, that's critically important, and I'm sure Michael uh, agree, Gage will agree, that, and you'll agree, but the network, the, the context you have is really important because if you look at it, when it's all said and done, 
a lot of the VC firms that are out there, they're ultra high net worth individuals are inside of those firms as limited partners. And if you really want to crack the secret code, it's how to get to those folks. I mean, think about it. It's a very small, and Jordan's here somewhere. Um, it's cracking that code and getting inside of that network because that's where it really happens. And that's how you can start to, because trust and credibility are important. And uh, I can tell you, once you have a, uh, a billion dollar company that acts, it's a whole lot easier getting funded and use those connections to spread some of the warmth and goodness out there. Listen, these ultra high net worth individuals, we work with several of the families directly. They want to invest in startups, but you know, and they use their family offices, but they really actively themselves want to get involved. And some of them can help a lot. They can make one phone call to their friend that's a CEO of a company that could be a great partner. So, you know, they're they're with all the darkness, there's light, right? Look for the light. No, that's a great advice, Gary. And actually, I was meditating on that before the show because I see on one hand a lot of investors with a lot of capital that are kind of like now playing it safe while they should be risking more and getting interesting companies with low valuations, but they are kind of like playing safe. And on the other hand, you see great startups that are kind of like drying the cash flow because the market conditions are not the best. So what would be the key? No, to, 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 well, I mean, to... the key is it. It's like, this is keep it simple, stupid. You know, I grew up on a farm, Gabriel. We had simple rules, uh -huh. right? You yeah. know, if the, yeah. if the price is down, it's a time to invest. But you don't go, you know, Warren Buffett says, you don't go with the crowd. You go in the opposite direction. So That's now's right. the time. And listen, listen, this is, infobesity hits all of us all the time. And we're trying to deal with data. So today, during the presentations, we talked a lot about how to deal with data, whether it's data is a, a corporate data, whether it's personal data, but we got a problem. Think about it. In each one of your own personal emails, how many times in the last two weeks has somebody said, Gabriel, I sent you a message. Did you get it? When did right. you send it? I sent it a week ago. Where did you send it? I sent it to your email. Which one? Um, <laughs> I think I sent it to your Yahoo. Uh, no, Gmail. Well, let me check. I can't find it. Will you send it again? You have 300,000 items estimated in your personal cloud. The entire web in 1996 is 257,000 websites. You gave her up more information in your personal cloud than the entire web. The problem is it's following the same trajectory. Within the next five years, it's going to be 10 million. It's doubling every year. How in the world can we make sense? Corporations have the same problem. So keep it simple, stupid. You need artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, <coughs> computers to help us figure it out. The world's going to change. This is like the beginning of the 20th century and electricity was discovered, right? It's going to no. change. So the companies that are here, it's incredible. Get out. You know, the investors still want to invest, but you got to go to, it's more a surgical approach than it was a, a shotgun approach before, right? Go out and use a laser precision to find those investors. Agree, agree, definitely. And I wanted to remind you quickly, Gary, you have to vote for the last company so we can wrap uh, up the... Devoting yeah, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I thought I did. No so worries. while Gary's doing this, guys, if you're a startup and you're listening, uh, please hear me out. Uh, the rumors of the funding drying up are highly exaggerated. All the reports from Q2 of this year show that the seed and the angel funding is on the rise. It's going yeah. up. The valuation is going up. So all this noise about the money is going away. Don't listen to it, please. I'm urging you. It's yeah, not happening. Because not you, you're right, Jordan, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's called the effect Pygmalion, right? The Pygmalion effect. And you'll create your own destiny. I'm telling you, there's there's investors out there. I just talked to one before this from one of the family offices in New York, one of the 10, one of the 10 wealthiest families on the planet. They're investing like crazy, but they're looking for guidance for the investment. Yeah. But, but Gary, uh, uh, just... Fact, matter of fact, CBM report, Pitchbook report, and Crunchbase report, TechCrunch, Crunchbase. They all say, and the seed and the angel funding has increased in Q2 year over year, quarter over quarter. So please don't think there's no money for you. Go out there and give them. Let the other fools think that, which clears the way for you, and you get yeah. up front of the line. So go, go, go. Yeah, definitely. That's a great point, Jordan. Yeah, it's a lot of capital out there. Um, yeah. Interesting, interesting moment we're living. So we have we have the results and the winner for today is Jay Boss Altinson. Congrats. You have the mic.
Hello, everyone. Oh, I was not expecting for that. Thank you yeah. so much. Uh, it's a pleasure. It was really interesting to meet you all and meet all these fantastic uh, companies. Yeah, congratulations to all and thank you. Yeah, congrats. You're moving, you're moving forward for next competition and I like all startups and also yours and I'm all about kids and, you know, improving and education. So congrats. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so happy. Thank you. All right, guys. Any other thoughts before we go? No, just thank you, Gabriel. We really appreciate it. Did a great job. And thank you to all my fellow uh, judges and the, and the companies there. Thanks for inviting us. And we look forward to the next one. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Everyone. Looking forward to see you soon. All right. Goodbye. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks, Looking guys. And congrats to everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.